Hello and welcome to our 13th session and in this session we are going to discuss about Euler rotation and gimbal orientation. The very first thing I want you to do is in the description I have provided you a file called plane.blend. You can download that file and open it in your blender. So I have launched blender and I am going to open this plane.blend file and here it has set an animation range of 1 to 60 and here you are seeing a plane and if you come to the outliner this aeroplane is an empty axis and if you open this all the parts of this aeroplane are actually parented to this empty axis called aeroplane. So right now I will come over here I will select this aeroplane axis bring the mouse in the 3D area and I will press alt G to clear all the location values alt R to clear all the rotation values and for scale I am not going to clear it but I am going to apply it. So to apply it I will press ctrl A and click on apply scale. I will come into the animation and I will first come to frame number 1 here and at frame number 1 I am now going to create an animation. So I am going to come into the rotation. I will bring the mouse here with this aeroplane selected. I will come into this rotation and press I. So now in the timeline you see a yellow diamond appearing here indicating that a keyframe has been added. Now I will come here and come to frame 60 and coming to frame 60 now along the z axis I will set the rotation to 360 degree and then again I will press I to add a keyframe. So you can see here you have two keyframes at keyframe 1 you have rotation of z at 0 and at keyframe 60 you have a rotation of 360 degree. So now if I rewind this and if I play this you can now see how this is rotating along the z axis. So this is a 360 degree rotation which is working fine. So I can turn and see it in all angles middle mouse click and just rotate and see it from the all angles and this is working fine. So I will stop the playback and I will press shift and left arrow to move to the starting frame. I will press 1 and come into the front view now. Then I will press shift and right arrow to come to the last frame here that is at frame 60. Now I will set the z value back to 0 and I will set the y value to 360 degree and I will press i. And now if I rewind this and if I play it see this is the y axis rotation of the plane and it is working absolutely fine. So I will stop the playback I will rewind it once again and then I will press shift right arrow to come to the 60th frame and this time here I will set the y to 0 and I will set x to 360 degree and then I will press i and I am going to add a keyframe. Now if I rewind and play this see this is the x rotation this is also fine. So I will stop the playback and I will remind it. Now there comes a situation where I want this plane to rotate along the x axis. So I want it to rotate it along the x axis like this. So for that I will select the rotation gimbal and I will show you to you along the x axis I have to rotate and at the same time I also want to apply another rotation. So let us see what happens when we apply multiple rotations. Say for example now I will press shift right arrow and I am now going to add rotation both in x angle and z angle and I am going to press i. And now remember along the y we have not added any rotation. So I will just press 1 come into the front view. Now if I rewind it and show it to you see you can see how it is rotating. So now it is rotating both along the x and z axis and along the y axis you are not seeing any rotation. I will stop the playback. I will again press shift right arrow to come to the last frame and if I apply rotation along all the three axes and if I press I 
Now, if I rewind this and play this, see how this is rotating. Can you see the wobbling happening? See, the aircraft starts to wobble and you are seeing very peculiar rotations happening when you have added rotation along all the three axes. So now, here comes the problem in mathematics. The main issue is, I will take the move tool now and here you can see this is the x axis of this aeroplane and this is the z axis of the aeroplane. Now, I will shift this to local to show you this. Then, I will uh, just come over here. I will press A to select everything. I will come into this animation panel, press A to select everything press X and I will delete all the keyframes so that there is no animation applied as of now. Now I have set this to local and now selecting the aeroplane. Now if I rotate this along the Y axis by 90 degree, now you can see what happened to this aeroplane. The orientation got changed. Now the Z axis of this plane has changed to the X axis. And the x axis of this plane has become z axis. So, the z and x axis got interchanged when I rotated it by along the y by 90 degree. So, similarly, here you will set this to 0, and if I rotate it along the z by 90 degree, now what is happening is now the x axis has become the y axis. You can see this has turned green. And if I middle mouse click and turn and show it to you, the y axis has become the x axis. So, when we apply rotation, the problem with the object that happens is its orientation is going to change. Now, in case of a single rotation, you will not have any issue, but when you apply multiple rotation along x, along y, along z, so then what happens is Say for example, here I will set this all these values to 0. I will rotate this along y by 45 degree. So, the aeroplane has tilted like this and now I will also rotate this by 90 degree. Now, what happens is when I apply multiple rotations like this, at that time the mathematical calculation became very tough and at that point they started to use the principles developed by a Swiss scientist Leonard Euler. Actually, it is spelled as Euler, but Euler. So, if you go to his Wikipedia page, you can study his achievement. And he was born in April 1707 and he actually proposed many useful trigonometric functions and he actually proposed a theory to calculate these rotations and that is why when we apply a 3D rotation, we even today call it as the Euler rotations. Say for example, if you come back to Blender, below this rotation, you have one drop down here which is saying XYZ Euler. What Euler did was, he used different combination of rotations. I will come to file open and in this object mode, we had created one fold co file called as 06 underscore rotate underscore gizmos. So, I want you to open this file. I have also provided this file in the link. So, now open this file. What I will do is again, I will open this animation. When we had designed it, we had done one mistake here that is this y axis, I have to rotate it by 90 degree, then press control A and apply this rotation. Now, similarly, even for this z blue gizmo, I am going to select it and I am going to rotate it by 90 degree along the x axis, press control A and apply the rotation. So, this is the right rotation that we were supposed to apply. So, right now I will come into the collection and I am going to call this as XYZ Euler and inside this, this blue gizmo, I will call it as Z axis because that represents the Z. Then green 
gizmo I am going to call it as the y axis and red gizmo I am going to call it as the x axis and I have put it inside this xyz euler I will select camera light and I am going to drag it and put it into this scene collection. So, right now I have one collection with xyz euler and inside this collection now I want to place my aeroplane at the center here. Before I do that I will go to file and choose save as and in your folder give this the name as 18 underscore euler rotations and click the save button and there is another file which is the plane file. So, this is the plane and now I want this plane to be taken in my Euler rotations file. Then I will come back here in file open recent I will open this 18 underscore Euler rotations to take any object or any model from one blender file to other file we come into file and we use two options here. One is the link option and another is the append option. Link means the it will be linked to the original model. If you delete that original plane dot blend then you will lose it here and if you make any modification in plane dot blend it will get updated here. And right now I am going to use append and when I click on append I have my plane dot blend which you have downloaded select this file and click on append. And when you click on append that plane dot blend file is going to open and you have all these folders present inside that plane dot blend. And in that I am now going to go into the collection and I will select this plane collection and click on append. And when click on append see you can now see this plane collection is added into my xyz eula. Now I will select this airplane right click and choose select hierarchy then press M here you will get move and I am going to move it into this XYZ Euler collection. So, I will move it into XYZ Euler so that it comes into XYZ Euler and this plane collection is now empty I will select it and press delete and delete it. I will select this plane then come over here and press 1 and come into the front view. I will press yes and I will scale it down so that it comes and sits at the center like this. I will press 7 and come into the top. I will press G Y and move it and place it so that it sits exactly at the center here. I will move it to the center like this and after I move it I will set its location I will select all the three here and set it to 0 and then in scale it is right now showing 0.002 I will press control A and I will apply the scale now this becomes 111. So, now we have placed the plane here. So, now I will come to file and save this file then I will come into this animation panel and I am going to set the last frame here to 60 frames and I am now going to first select the x axis here. At frame number 1 for x axis with rotation set to 0 I will press I and add a keyframe. Then I will move the to frame number 60 and then I am going to rotate this along the x axis by 360 degree press I and add a keyframe. Now, if I rewind and play it you can see the x axis rotating. You can see the x axis rotation happening. I will stop the playback press shift and left arrow to come to frame number 1 and next now I am going to select the y axis that is the green at frame number 1 I will add a keyframe then I will press shift right arrow and then I will set the y rotation to 360 degree press I and then I will rewind it and if I play this you can now see x and y rotations are rotating. I will stop the playback press shift left arrow come to first frame and now select the z axis and click on rotation here and then shift right arrow to come to 60th frame and I am going to add along the z 360 degree rotation press I and now if I rewind and play it 
you can see all the three axes are rotating. In XYZ Euler system, he wants, I will stop the playback, I will rewind it. He says that X, the very first axis, will be the child of the Y. So, I will shift click Y and select it. So, that Y is the active now one now. I will press control P and I am going to parent it. So, now Y is the parent, X is its child and here instead of Beezer circle, I will call this as the arrows. I will give it the name as arrows. Now, next uh, I am going to next select this Y axis press shift and select this z -axis. I will press control P and I am going to parent it. So, now you have z axis I will call this as z axis arrow and then this has y axis and in y axis I have this y axis arrow I will call this as y axis arrow and inside this you have the x axis and I will call this as x axis arrow. Okay, so now this is what is the structure of this x y z Euler. So, now what happens is if I rewind and play it, this is how the rotations happen in x y z Euler. I will select my aeroplane and then I am now going to come and select this x axis and I will press yet control P and I am going to parent it. So, now if I rewind and play it, you can now see how the plane is rotating. You can see the rotation. I will stop the playback. I will press 1 and come into the front view. I will press shift A and I am going to add a text. I will press Rx90 to rotate it. I will press tab and I am going to call this as x, y, z. I am going to press G, move it down and keep it. So, this is x, y, z. Select this x, y, z. I will select this text. I will double click it, call it as x, y, z text and I am now going to drag it and put it inside this x, y, z order. So, this collection I am having it. I will now right click this and I am now going to choose duplicate collection and I am going to switch off the original XYZ Euler and this I will call it as XYZ underscore gimbal lock and I am going to call this as text XYZ. I will press tab and I am going to call this as XYZ gimbal lock. I will press left arrow and come to this gimbal lock, we will press delete and move this into the next line, press tab, come into text here and I am going to come into alignment and I am going to align it to the center, press GX and move it over here. I am now going to click on XYZ gimbal lock, I will right click and choose select objects, so that only the object present inside this group is selected. I will come here, press A and press X and delete of all the keyframes when the playback head is at frame number 1. So, now we have no animation and now here what happens is right now if I select this Y axis and if I now rotate it along the Y axis by 90 degree. Now, you can see that when I rotated this y axis by 90 degree, x and z axis became the same. It is the same now. Now, in this case, now what happens is you have totally lost the x axis. Now, you cannot rotate this plane along the z axis. So, when you have x, y, z Euler, when y is rotated by plus 90 degree or minus 90 degree, two axes will become the same. So, now if I rotate along x, it is rotating in the same direction. If I rotate along y, it is rotating in the same direction. So, both I will set it to 0. So, now the problem we have is we cannot rotate this aeroplane in this axis 
x-axis. So I will just switch this off. I will switch on XYZ Euler again. I will right click and I am going to duplicate this collection and I am going to switch off this XYZ Euler and I am going to name this new collection XZY Euler. And in this case, now I will just right click and click select object. All the objects are selected. I will rewind to frame number 1, come over here, press X and delete all the keyframes. Then I will select this XYZ, press tab and I am going to rename this now as XZY. I am now going to come over here to XZY Euler. I will first open this and select the aeroplane. I will select this aeroplane underscore 0, 0. I will come here and press Alt P and I will clear the parent. Then I will select next this X axis, press Alt P and clear the parent. Y axis I will select and I will clear the parent. Z axis I will select and I will clear the parent. Now the order of parenting will be different because we are now going to use the XYZ Euler. X will be the child of not Y but it will be the child of Z. So I will select Z and with Z the active one, press Ctrl P and parent it. And then Z will be the shift press and select Y, Ctrl P and parent it. So now the order has changed, Y, Z and X. And now I will select my aeroplane here and I will select the X axis. I will press Ctrl P and I am going to parent it. In this case, now what happens is when you now rotate Y along 90 degree, see you have no gimbal lock. See there is no gimbal lock, all the axes are open. I will press Ctrl Z now, but now if I select Z and if I rotate it by 90 degree, then now you can see the gimbal lock is happening between X and Y axis. If I turn it along X and if I turn it along Y, it is rotating in the same direction. So I will select both and I will make it 0. And so when you are using XZY Euler, when Z axis is plus 90 or minus 90 degree, X and Y axis will get locked. I am going to double click this and now I am going to name this as XZY gimbal lock. So this is the gimbal lock that has happened. I am just going to select this and I am going to duplicate this entire collection and I am now going to call this as XZY Euler. I will now come back to this Z axis and I will set this rotation back to 0. And now I will switch off this gimbal lock. I am now going to select X and at frame number 1 add a keyframe here. For Y axis green also I will add a keyframe. For blue Z axis also I will add a keyframe. Then I will move to frame number 60 and for X along the X axis I will rotate it by 360 degree and add a keyframe. Then for Y, along the Y axis, I will rotate it by 360 degree and add a keyframe. And for Z, I am going to rotate it along the Z by 360 degree and I am going to add a keyframe. I will rewind this and if I now, I will press 1 and if I now play this animation. So now in XZY, the rotation is going to happen. So this is what we call as the XZY Euler. Now the next option we have is say I will come over to my collection I will currently switch off XZY Euler. I will again enable XYZ Euler. I will just right click and I will duplicate this collection. I will switch off XYZ Euler and I am now going to select this XYZ001 the duplicated one and in this case we are now going to use the third option which is Y at Z. So I will come over here and type Y X Z all up. And in case of this here also I will select the text, rename it as Y X Z all up. And I will press tab here 
and I will rename this as YXZ. I will press tab again. Come into this, I will right click and choose select object to select everything. I will rewind to come to frame number 1, press A and press X and delete off all the keyframes. I have removed all the keyframes now. I will open the Z axis, then Y axis, then X axis. I will first select the aeroplane and I will bring the mouse here, press Alt P and I am going to clear the parent. Then I will select the X axis, Alt P and clear the parent. I will select the Y axis, Alt P and clear the parent and Z axis select it, Alt P and clear the parent. So, all the parents has been cleared. I will select the Y axis and with shift pressed, I will select the X axis. I will press Ctrl P and I am going to parent it. And then I will select X, press Z and press Ctrl P and parent it. And finally, I am now going to select my aeroplane and now I am going to select the Y axis and I am going to press Ctrl P and I am going to parent it. I am in the frame number 1, I will first select the Y axis and I will come in the list and I select Y, X, Z, Aula and I am going to add a keyframe for rotation here at frame number 1. Similarly, I will then select X axis, I will choose Y, X, Z, Aula and I am going to add a keyframe. I will select the blue Z axis, I will even this change to Y, X, Z, Aula and I am going to add a keyframe for all the three. Then I am going to move to frame 60 or press shift right arrow. Now at frame number 60, I will first select my Y axis and I will rotate it along the Y axis by 360 degree and I am going to add I, the keyframe. Then I am going to next select the X axis and along the X axis I will rotate it by 360 degree and I will press I to add a keyframe. Then finally I am going to select the Z axis, I will rotate it by 360 degree and I will press I. If I rewind this and if I play this, you can now see this rotation is what we call as the Y, X, Z rotation. Stop the playback, I will rewind it. Now I will come over here, I have this Y, X, Z Aula and I am now going to select this and I am now going to again duplicate this selection. I will switch off Y, X, Z Aula and then for this, I am going to call this as Y, X, Z Gimbal Lock. So now in this case, I am again going to click on this and click on select object to select everything. I will come into animation, I will come to rewind to frame number 1, press X and delete all the keyframes. So all the animations are now removed. And now in this case, when I select this middle axis, that is the X axis, I am now going to select the X axis and if I rotate it along the X direction here by 90 degree, you can now see that the Y and Z axis are becoming the same. And so, this is the gimbal lock situation in Y, X, Z. So, in the Y, X, Z, now in this case what happens is, if I move along the Y also the rotation is the same. If I move along the Z also, the rotation is the same. So, Y and Z axis gets locked. I will set it back to 0. I have created 6 collections here. So, I want to compare it in one screen, I will just switch off all the six. I will come into scene collection and I am now going to create a new collection and I am going to call this as compare EULA. I will press 1 and come into the front view, see that the cursor is at the center. Now I will come here and come to add and I will add a collection instance of first the XYZ Aula. So, I have added XYZ, I will press GX and move it to the left or I will just uh, zoom it down a little and I will just move it and place it here on the top here. Then I will again come to add collection and I will next add XZY Aula and I am going to just press GZ and move it and place it to the top like this. 
then I am next going to add come here and in the collection instant now I will add the yxz aula I will press G and place it to the right like this then I will come to add and I am going to add the next collection here that is the xyz gimbal lock and I will place this gimbal lock below here for xyz then similarly I will come to add and next xzy gimbal lock and I will press g z and move it and place it here and next I am now going to add the next gimbal lock that is the yxz gimbal lock and I will place it here ok. So, now you have got a fair idea of all how all these rotations are going to work. Now, if I rewind it and if I play it you can see how the rotations are happening and how the locks are happening here. I will now stop the playback and I will rewind and I will show you to you in all these cases the last axis is always called as the primary axis. This axis will work absolutely with no problem. The second axis we call it as the secondary axis which is x here and here also x and here it is y. In case of x, y, z you should avoid y axis rotation. In case of x, z, y avoid z rotation along y, x, z avoid x rotation. I will switch off compare Euler, I will come back to xyz Euler, I will enable it, I will right click and I will duplicate the collection and in this collection I will call this as aeroplane as I will have only aeroplane in this. I will select this text press x and delete it then in the z axis I am going to select the z axis and I will delete it y axis I will delete it, x axis I will delete it and I will have only the aeroplane. I will switch off this x, y, z ruler here. If I come over here in this global rotations and when you are using the x, y, z ruler, you cannot identify how the locking is happening. But here in transform orientation if, if I choose gimbal now, now in case of gimbal what happens is see now you can see here right now I am in x, y, z rotation and in y if I rotate it by 90 degree it says that it is going to get gimbal lock. So, if I rotate 90 degree you can easily see here it is showing me the exact axis which is get locked. You can see x and z is getting locked this you can see it only in gimbal transform orientation, but if I come to global or local you will not know this. How to avoid this gimbal lock? Now, uh, first I will just press control z and I will undo this. Say for example, I want to avoid this gimbal lock completely in some applications. Say for example, when you are building a flight simulator or when you are building a drone simulator. In this case what happens is this gimbal lock is going to create a huge problem. Apart from Euler system, they devised another system and that system is called as quaternion system. See in the list if you come here, you have this quaternion system and in quaternion system, you can totally avoid this gimbal lock. And in quaternion system, we use four dimensions not three dimensions. We have one virtual dimension called w which is a scalar value and along with it we use this x, y, z value and this we call it as quaternion system. Blender supports quaternion system, but as of now we are not going to use this rotation in our animations because here the way we are going to calculate is entirely different. You have to use a mathematical formula and you have to calculate every time you make a rotation. This is a highly complicated system. So, this we are not going to use it, but you can know that Blender supports quaternion system and this will be used when you are creating some application for aircraft simulator, flight simulator or drone simulator, we use this. So, as of now, I will switch it back to x, y, z. Ok, now I will switch off this aeroplane and I will enable my compare Euler again and now as an assignment what I want you to do is right now we have added 
three Euler rotations, but there are six. So, if I select this and if I come into item, you can see we have created x, y, z, x, z, y and y, x, z and I want you to create another three rotations y, z, x, x, z, x, y and z, y, x and add it here as a row on the top and I want you to create a complete comparison. I am now going to come here file and I am going to save it. And now one last thing that is left in the object mode is we have to discuss about these other three buttons transform pivot point then you have the snapping and the third one is the proportional editing. So these three things we are going to discuss it in our last session in this object mode chapter.